What is the effect of media on people? Does it really have the power to influence the way people act in society? Being in a society that advertises unrealistic body types can pressure women to aim for perfection. To achieve this, women often fall victim to eating disorders such as anorexia nervosa. Anorexia has the highest death rate out of any medical condition. 90 to 95 percent of the people with anorexia are women, and 5 to 20 percent of those people will die from it. The media has a strong influence on women around the world. Women take drastic measures in order to achieve that picture perfect look shown on television and magazines. And unfortunately, the media demonstrates that a perfect woman should be skinny, slender, and very slim. And I don't think that that's the case. But unfortunately, women go through many um, drastic measures in order to achieve that look and in order to be classified. Um, to the media's definition of beautiful. And unfortunately, that leads to um, anorexia and bulimia. In Hollywood, there is pressure to be perfect all the time. Many models and actors are so committed to being thin that they starve themselves. More than half of them have struggled with it for more than 10 years. Why live life from dreams? My name is Courtney Zito. I'm an actress living in Los Angeles. Uh, currently, I am working on a web series called Hollywood Girl that I also wrote. Um, I direct, produce, and star in it as well. And uh, I've been doing that for about, let's say, the past six months. Hi, I'm Kylie Basuti, and I have been a professional model in the industry for seven years since the age of 14. I'm modeled for companies like Victoria's Secret, Nicole Miller, Seventeen Magazine, and much more. I've been around so many people who have eating disorders in the industry. Hi, uh, my name is Danielle Basuti, and a lot of you know me from the TV show True Jackson VP, the character I play, Miss Amanda Cantwell. I think that definitely um, teenage girls are affected by what they see in the media, on TV, I think, you know, over the past couple of years or so, it's gotten really tough, you know, in terms of how these young girls view themselves in comparison to these actresses and these models, you know, that they see on TV or they see in magazines. Um, the the sizes of them are just shrinking, you know, as the year go as the years go by. I feel a hundred percent that teen girls are influenced and affected by the way women are portrayed in the media. And it is so sad for me to see young girls struggling with eating disorders because of this. I think it is unhealthy the way the media obsessed overweight and looking a certain way. All of the tabloids are filled with this kind of stuff and it is bad for young girls to have to feel as though they must live up to it. This is why I try very hard to have a healthy body weight and work out and have muscle tone versus being extra thin. I want to show women how to be happy in their own bodies instead of desiring to have someone else's. It is so important for young girls to know that what they see in magazines is superficial and fake. It's full of photoshop, a ton of makeup and hair extensions. It isn't what women really look like naturally. They even photoshop women's breasts and butts to make them bigger in Victoria's Secret and other catalogs. I hope girls will start to see through this kind of stuff and be happy with who they are. The answer to that question is yes. Throughout the ages, uh, women have been affected by the images that we see in the media. And before there actually was television, um, you know, uh, in Victorian ages, women would sometimes, uh, you know, they, they wore uh, corsets and uh, women would ha wouldn't, could barely even breathe. They would have fainting couches because the, the style then, the, the look of beauty then was to uh, have a very, very, very sm ridiculously small waist. And so they would corset the women so tightly that uh, they couldn't breathe and they would fall and they'd faint. But, you know, what's funny is that throughout the ages we've sort of allowed these ideas of what outward beauty or imagery is as being what beautiful is. And um, I think it's sort of odd that it's never sort of originated from a more organic, 
authentic place of just being healthy and being happy uh, in who you are. Uh, for actresses, yes, and models, yes, absolutely. You know, it's, it used to be you had to fit into a size two or four because that was a sample size, and now it's a zero and a double zero. And, you know, there are these shows, you know, the race to double zero and super thin me, and you see, like, these women doing these horrible things to themselves, you know, in the pursuit of a size double zero. And to me, you know, size double zero is... I mean, if that's what you naturally are, great. But I really doubt that most women are naturally a size double zero. I just don't think that's realistic for, you know, 80% of the population. That's just a guess. I definitely feel pressure in the modeling industry to always try to maintain a great figure. I almost always have to be sure that my body is in check because there are thousands of other women who are in great shape who are fighting for the job as well. It's a big competition. Well, I'm not a model, thank God. And uh, yes, I feel pressure being an actress to be a certain size. Um, the camera adds 10 pounds, and it's, it's not a lie, it really does. What I'm kind of trying to do with myself is, you know, it's really hard not to feed into all of that, and I'm trying to uh, stay grounded and stay healthy and work out with a trainer and eat the right things and not just, you know, I'm going to starve myself and I'm not going to eat because it doesn't work and it wreaks havoc on your body, you know, and I don't want to abuse myself like that. You know, I've done stupid things like that in the past and I just, I don't want to do it anymore. It's not worth it. I was brought up in a great way. I have my foundation and my faith in Christ and that has really helped me to stay grounded in everything that I do. I find my value in that versus worldly things like being super thin or getting a certain job. I have also read a lot of self-motivation books that are about your mind and staying optimistic. I believe that all insecurities and doubts begin in your mind. I think that is where people start feeling like they have to become something they are not to get a job or be accepted, and when they let that become their reality, they can start obsessing about it and fall into the wrong things and start making unhealthy decisions. I do that um, by surrounding myself with really great people, uh, amazing family, um, people who love me for who I am, and that is a difficult, um, it's, it, it's difficult sometimes to, to sort through your friends and realize the ones that really love you for who you are and then the others that um, don't. <laughs> and sometimes we can become attached to people, um, you know, or ideas that um, aren't good for us and we have to sort of, we have to differentiate between uh, what's healthy and what's not and when we become attached to a certain idea or person it can be difficult to let them go but um, it's, you gotta let it go. I've committed to maintaining a certain shape that I'm comfortable with, but that that shape is a healthy shape, and I do it by eating right, uh, by getting sleep, and by exercising. And um, I'm not trying to be a zero. I'll, I'll never be a zero, um, and I'm not also not ever going to be a size eight uh, because that would mean that I was eating a whole lot more than I should be and not exercising a day in my life. So somewhere in between there is, you know, the size that I am when I'm eating healthy and exercising and um, happy in my life. Life is meant to be enjoyed and part of enjoying life, I think, is, you know, going out and enjoying a nice meal or going and experiencing a new culture or having a nice you know, uh, dinner with family, and who wants to be constantly thinking about every calorie you're putting in your mouth? You're not there, you're not in the moment, and you're not enjoying yourself. And that's just not how I choose to live my life. And I feel sad for people, you know, who think that that's the way they have to live, because life is about so much more than that. I feel that anorexia is a disease that is influenced by a person letting their thoughts about being too heavy become realities in their lives, which can result in the condition anorexia, in which patients whose weight and body fat are far below normal are convinced in their minds that they are grossly overweight. 
I did have a friend in elementary school, actually, I think it was junior high, it may have been seventh grade, who was anorexic, and I sort of remember feeling tormented for this poor girl because um, she, little, like, little by little, her waist was, like, inching in. And um, I remember at lunchtime, she didn't eat, she would just chew gum. And I was sort of horrifically fascinated with the idea that I never saw her eat. And I was her friend, and felt like I wanted to reach out to her and talk to her but you know seventh grade is such a you know it's an awkward time I didn't know how do I say something to her are her parents saying anything to her I remember I think I talked to a teacher once about it because I you know a few of us girls were really bothered by it because we didn't really know how to be there for her and she couldn't see that her body was beautiful you know she kept looking in the mirror and seeing all the flaws and I remember in PE she used to comment about you know how she was fat and she would work really extra hard to try to lose the weight and it just it's a never-ending cycle because it's not really about losing the weight it's an it's an inner quality that um, that was sort of lacking or a belief that um, you know that she's lovable that she's good you know that um, that she uh, that she has enough to contribute in this world um, just by being who she is. She doesn't have to be what the media says she should be for whatever beauty might be, um, if that makes any sense at all. Uh, I think that if you're dealing with anorexia and um, or if you know someone who might be suffering from anorexia, um, maybe talk to a teacher or maybe just gently talk to them and see if, if you know they can recognize that and maybe get some help. It's well, I think difficult because most people that are, uh, you know, in that disease or illness are in denial. And so, um, gosh, I'd say pray for them and uh, try to be their friend. We are meant to eat, you know. It's as natural as sleeping, as natural as breathing. So, you know, it's important just to embrace your beauty. And that comes from within. And that's your uniqueness. So eat exercise, sleep, be healthy, love what you do, surround yourself with people who support you, and um, hopefully you'll avoid the, um, the lie, the lie that you have to be anything else than what you already are. In November 2010, Portia de Rossi released a book about the struggle she faced in life, being an actress who starred in popular shows like Ally McBeal, Arrested Development, and Better Off Ted. She felt pressure to be perfect under everyone's watchful eyes. In Unbearable Lightness, she talks about how obsessed she was with her body image and as a result, she wasted more than 15 years of her life binging and purging. But it's not the weight gain from the six ounces of yogurt that worries me. It's the loss of self-control. It crosses my mind to vocalize my thoughts of self-loathing because speaking the thoughts would have to burn more calories than just thinking the thoughts. And so I say, you're nothing. You're average. You're an ordinary, average, fat piece of you have no self-control. You're a stupid, fat, disgusting dyke. You ugly, stupid bitch. As I reach the bathroom and wipe away the last of my tears, I'm alarmed by the silence. The voice has stopped. When it's quiet in my head like this, that's when the voice doesn't need to tell me how pathetic I am. I know it in the deepest part of me. When it's quiet like this, that's when I truly hate myself. From her lowest point, Portia began the painful climb back to a life of health and honesty, falling in love with and eventually marrying Ellen DeGeneres. Shoelace is untied You can dry your eye Perfect shadows lie behind us, and this is the day I'm making mine. 